Hey everyone, this is Ross Raddy and welcome to another episode of Fruit Talk. This is the podcast style video that I do for you guys every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. We talk a lot about fruits, a lot about vegetables and how to use all that stuff in the kitchen and also you know, how to grow it and not only how to grow it but the really weird and interesting things that I think a lot of you guys maybe have never heard of. Well, at this point, if you've been watching for a while, you probably have heard of quite a bit but um in today's episode, we're going to be mentioning things about the figs. We're going to be actually looking at a friend's orchard. He just put out a YouTube video um, of his orchard, giving us a nice little update. And then also, we're going to be covering a thread that someone had posted on rfigs.com. Um, it's going to really, I think, shed some light for a lot of you newer guys out there, uh, newer growers out there that... Um, could definitely save you guys some money so stick around for that but bill my buddy bill is the guy who whose nursery we're going to look at here and he has an orchard um in lancaster pa and i've been to his place we did a couple of videos actually last year on the youtube channel um actually showing off his place we did a taste test we did actually a number of videos with him and to be honest with you none of the audio got recorded it was a bit of a shame we had a I had to do voiceovers, the whole thing. Bill is such a nice guy. He has a really awesome website here, um, or a nice way to contact him, I should say, on Facebook. It's just off the beaten path nursery. Search that into Facebook, and you can find him. You can contact him. He's got a lot of things for sale, so if you guys are interested in buying plants, um, he definitely has quite a bit most of the time for sale, So and for pretty affordable prices. But... Um, to go back here to his orchard, the video he put out, I've been kind of asking him, kind of bugging him, because I wanted to compare where his trees were at versus mine at this point of the season. And his are about a year older than mine, because um, he just moved to this property. And I had just really recently started taking my in-ground fig trees seriously. I've had, I have two of them in the ground that have been there for years, my Improved Celeste and my Malta Black, those have been there, I think, for like four or five years or something something crazy at this point, and they just really don't do well. And for various reasons, I've gone over that, and we're going to touch on that again here in this video. But um, for the most part, I haven't really had many fig trees in the ground for very long. So Bill has had a lot of them now. He planted, I think... I think a hundred the first year he moved to this property which I believe is now this is now his third spring and second winter if I'm not mistaken or third summer and second winter um, so these trees are roughly in their third growing season planted in the ground and a lot of them as he mentioned in the past and even when I met him he planted them as very small trees and his belief is that uh, when they start out smaller, not as really large fig trees, they really adapt and acclimate themselves a lot quicker and better, and they have just a, a better track record that way. And I can certainly agree with him. I've heard people tell me the complete opposite. So, um, and that's been the complete opposite for years, I think, with a lot of growers. Um, personally, I'm putting even just sticks in the ground. You know, I'm not even really concern too much i know how resilient these trees are i know how unlikely they actually are that they're going to die i find it to be very unlikely at least historically very few of my trees have actually died in the ground i think actually none um unless i came in there and ripped it out myself and killed it um then none of the, i don't believe any of my trees have died that way but um like I was saying, it's been really awesome to see Bill's trees at this point. Although, again, his are, for the most part, either one or two years ahead of mine. He has some trees that I, I remember seeing last year that he lost a few trees that winter. Um, the first winter after he planted them. Um, he lost some and then he put some replacements in the ground. And those are about as old as my trees. So... I was it's nice to visually compare I mean obviously I can't be there but it's really interesting to see the evolution of uh, what he's been doing and then also what I'm doing and to really confirm that this works and doesn't work because what I have 
in my yard, again, is the Malta Black and the Imperial Celeste that have been there for years and really have done almost nothing. I mean, they produce, but it seems like the location that they're in and the soil that they're in is just very cold. Even this year, things really didn't warm up as well as I would have liked. Um, so we're going to correct that even further next year. Uh, so this year still wasn't really all that great, but it's very obvious to me that the soil temperature really makes the biggest difference with these figs. I mean, it is just paramount. Um, it's huge. It's night and day. So for me, uh, really watching Bill's video here really confirms that further than just looking at my own yard. I mean, the, the biggest difference from one year to the next is just nu is nuts. And it seems like a lot of these trees, though, Unfortunate as it is, you're not really going to get great production the first year you plant them, if it, if anything at all. And you probably won't get much production in the second year. So really the third year is where it's at. And I think some of his trees now, again, are in the third year, the third summer now at this point. And they're producing. And not only are they producing, but they're producing in August. And Bill's in 6B. Okay, he's in a colder place than where I'm at. And, you know, if I just play this video for you guys, you can see some of these smaller trees. You know, these are, this one over here, I believe, is some that he planted as replacements. So these are quite young. Um, he goes into talking about a number of these varieties, like Thimarn and Susser George and Long de Du, Isbat Anaj, Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross. So he talks about. A number of these trees that are doing well for them, and you can see, I mean, look how many figs are on that. That's pretty That's pretty amazing. Um, and this is a young tree. You know, these are not, I don't think the, these in this row, or some of them in this row, I'll have to confirm with Bill, but uh, like this one right here is definitely there last year. So this is, you know, three years, th this is their third summer, these trees. Whereas the one we just looked at, I think that's only in its second summer which is kind of nuts. That's kind of crazy, all those figs they have on it. Um, in fact, that's way better than some of the trees that I have in my yard. Um, like my Pastiliere is probably the only one that I can really, or even the Nero 600M. Um, I think the Italian 258 and the Noir de Barbantane just came back too vigorously. Even the Nero 600M came back too vigorously, but uh, comparing my Pastiliere, which I would say did pretty well, um, that tree that he has, which is of similar age, I would say a similar soil temperature because of this black plastic that he's getting compared to the rocks that I have and other things that I'm using to increase the heat. Um, I would say his tree looks just like mine, maybe not as bushy, but the whole thing is just covered in figs. So he's got he's got some really interesting varieties here for sure. This is his long to do that he's showing us. This is one that I I also just planted this spring, but it was a really large tree. So we'll see how this one does next year. But I'm expecting big things. Like he says, this one, his Fimarn, both are, are ripening now. He's got a couple of figs on them swelling now. It's the beginning of August. That's insane for someone in 6B, for even someone in 7A, for someone in 7B. That's really awesome. I mean... Depends on where you guys live, but uh, for for us, me and him and I that are so far north, um, you know, getting a ripe fig in early August is like impressive for a container, and he's getting that in the ground, which is just utterly insane. If you really if you really think about this, if you've if you've been growing figs a long time, you can realize. A long enough time I should say you'll realize that this what he's doing right here is insane is actually crazy this is um, this is really a great demonstration which is exactly why I wanted to show this to you guys in this episode that right there I think is his Colonel Lippmann's that he was showing us um, not really covered in fruit in terms of fruit that will ripen in time but uh, he's impressed by how vigorous it is and how fast it came back from uh, total dieback and he's you know he's not protecting these trees that's the other thing none of these trees are getting protection um, which I've also talked about a lot and there's a lot of naysayers on the channel who just swear that this is not gonna work and that 
I even had one guy told me I failed. <laughs> it's like, what did I fail? I didn't fail anything. <laughs> we're only in the we're only in the uh, second year now of some of my trees in the ground. So, you know, this is I, I guess such a great demonstration of what the potential could be. And I just have been very, very impressed by Bill's Orchard here. And um, it just goes to show. It really does. I mean, for all the naysayers out there, this is now, this is proof. This can be done from dieback, from total dieback. You can get fruit at a very reasonable time on these in-ground trees. In fact, <clears throat> I'm so... Um, so excited about this that I'm, I'm looking forward to more of my in-ground trees than I am some of my containers. And if it wasn't for the greenhouse, I probably wouldn't have many containers at all anymore. In fact, I'd be mainly focusing on the in-ground trees, putting down rocks or this black plastic that he's got down to really warm up that soil and we'll get our figs very at a very reasonable time in a much higher quantity. So. You know, again, I really respect what Bill's doing here. Um, it's great that he was able to show us through this video. Uh, again, check him out on Facebook here, Off the Beaten Path Nursery. He does have plenty of plants for sale, regardless of of their figs. He also has many other fruiting plants that are quite interesting and weird. And I've definitely gotten a few things from him in the past, as well as figs. I mean, he really helped me out when I first started out. And, uh, you know, nowadays we, we sort of trade back and forth. So Bill's a really good friend to have. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about this and kind of kind of really use this as proof to the naysayers because I still am really realistically a, a year away from having such proof as, as that he has. You know, um, we still need to refine a few things. We still need to really, uh, you know, straighten things up and have a decent season and then we should be able to do exactly what bill's doing here and maybe even potentially a week earlier you know because of just i'm in a warmer spot than he is is all um he does have really nice soil um he's got really limestone rich soil so uh who knows maybe the soil may ha play a part here in terms of the differences but i, I really think it's the the soil temperatures and that's kind of what the Malta black and the improved Celeste in the, in the front of my house. For those of you guys who've seen those trees before in prior videos, the soil is just too cold over there and they don't warm up quick enough. And now that I've put things in a warmer spot in the Southern exposure, either against the house or on the Western exposure against the house, things are just really taken off. It's very obvious. Uh, you know, I see it every day out there. And it's not so obvious, I think, to you guys just yet, but we'll come out with some sort of update on these in-ground trees because a lot of them actually are fruiting for me. Although, you know, we did plant a huge amount of them um, this spring, so them fruiting is not really that impressive, but, you know, I'm expecting good things. And, and Bill also mentioned his uh, method of protection, too. I want to mention this. He, met, he mentioned it on our figs, not in the video exactly. But he is going to be protecting his in-ground trees this year, um, he thinks anyway, by chopping them down to the base and covering them. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing this year as well, chopping them down to about 6 inches, 12 inches, and covering them with something. Um, so far, I've settled on a tarp. Maybe we can find some other material that's better. But uh, Bill is going to do the same thing for something on such a large scale. He's got it's a huge spacing between these trees, by the way. And just you know, if we chop these down, protect the base, the bottom six to twelve inches, they'll probably fruit about two weeks earlier than maybe they did form this year. I mean, what are the what are they going to look like next year? It's kind of kind of scary. Um, containers are becoming obsolete, man. Unless you have a greenhouse. Uh, I think containers are going to be pretty obsolete pretty soon here um, in terms of our figs. Uh, that's which is a, just an absolutely crazy thought. But uh, yeah, so this next part of the the episode, the episode here of Fruit Talk, I want to talk to you guys about this post that this guy made here. He says, "Need help choosing who makes the cut." He has a number of varieties that he acquired, and they're all from rooted cuttings, three to four foot tall. 
he hasn't tasted many figs. He's uh, wondering if he has enough room to store them in the wintertime. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are in the same boat. So I want to talk about this. And he's he's trying to get rid of some. He's trying to wonder, He's trying to figure out which of these he should get rid of. Obviously, it's so important to figure out where this person lives. And it says Long Island, New York on his location. So knowing that, we're going to make recommendations based off of Zone 7A, similar climate to my own. Um, now, this could be totally different answers depending on where you guys live. Uh, now, he is trying to figure out which ones are basically the same. So let's kind of do that first. Which ones of these really don't make a whole lot of sense? Well, Angelica, I don't know what this is exactly, but I think this is Brunswick. If I'm not mistaken, I have to look this one up, but I'm pretty sure Angelica is Brunswick, uh, but I could be wrong. And if those two are the same, that's one you could get rid of. If I'm pretty, if I'm, if I'm sure on that. Also, in this climate, I wouldn't grow Brunswick anyway. Get rid of Brunswick completely, just a complete waste of a fig. Um, what else do we have here? Okay, so he's got Antonio Black. He has, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna go down the list. Belclair pops purple. He has Hardy Chicago. These are all Hardy Chicago types that I'm mentioning right now. So he has three of them. He can eliminate two of the three if he wanted. Not that I recommend it because Hardy Chicago is such an incredible fig. Here's Viel, uh, Tacoma Violet. That's another one that's a Hardy Chicago type. So personally, pick the one that you think is going to be the best of the four and keep that one if you really are tight on space but personally I have like six or seven hardy Chicago types myself I have I think I have more than that actually I probably have about ten trees in total to, you know compared to you know if you think if you think about the ones that are in the ground and the ones that are in containers you know I've got a ton of them and it really is a really special fig that in all honesty it's hard to really beat it really is in a zone 7a climate uh, let's see what else he's also got Adriatic JH Bataglia um, those are very very similar almost the same I mean it's very difficult to even discern the differences which will take years to really figure out the true differences on them um, strawberry verte is another one of those three so he could eliminate two of those three strawberry verte personally is my favorite because it's the most precocious it produces really well guys um, and I can't really say if it's more rain resistant or not than the others, but so far it was showing better rain resistance. And in my opinion, it has pretty decent rain resistance. Um, let's see, what else does he have that's probably a copy or very closely related to something else? Well, he's got Black Madeira. There's probably some other Black Madeiras that he's got in terms of they're pretty much the same thing. Uh, let's see. Well, Italian 258, I wouldn't say it's the same thing, but it's very close. And it also tastes very similar. There's not a huge difference. Um, but to get rid of both of those, or one of those, I think is a mistake. I, I don't know. I think uh, they just produce so many figs, so many tasty figs. They may ripen late. But without a doubt, I think you need a greenhouse for both of them to really get a reasonable crop in a zone 7a climate because the rain in this portion of the country is just too high if they ripen too late combined with that rain you're not going to get any you know you're just not they're all going to split and they're not going to be edible i mean they split very easily those figs so in my opinion that's you know i would i would strongly consider getting rid of them actually if i didn't have a greenhouse in fact, I probably would. I would get rid of them if I didn't have a greenhouse. I would not grow Black Madeira or Italian 258 in this climate if I didn't have a greenhouse. However, there is a thing to be said that, oh, I want to taste it, right? I want to know what this thing tastes like. Um, so it, for that purpose, you may just have to grow one of them. Um, okay, so what else does he have here? I think those are mostly the copies. He does have a lot of the cold adams, which are all very, very, very similar in terms of flavor. Obviously, they look different, right? They all have different colored skin. They're also very late. 
Um, they do handle the rain really well. In fact, if I was going to keep all out of all the late figs that he probably has on here, I would consider keeping, you know, one of the cold adoms. You know, that's, that's assuming I don't have a greenhouse. If I don't have a greenhouse, I would keep a cold adam over the black Madeira and the Italian 258. Um, okay, so let's see. What else do we have here? Um, Black Mission, I would just straight up get rid of it. I don't think it's a good fig. It's a commercial fig, and for me, that's it. That's all it has going for it. It also splits. It can split quite heavily here in this climate. Black Sidar, I'm kind of on the fence about, right? People say it does really well here, but it has a huge eye, and that could be a very big issue. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Black Pearl, I don't believe has been confirmed common. It comes from um, La Russo in Italy. I think that's one of his varieties, if I'm not mistaken. Same thing with this one here. Maybe this is a Mario fig. I can't remember. But if they are... Um, actually, I think this is a Mario fig. But Black Pearl, if that is a, a La Russo fig, I would just completely get rid of it. I wouldn't waste my time. I wouldn't be the guinea pig. Let somebody else figure out if it's common, and then maybe if it looks really good years from now, I'll pick it up again. Black Spanish, this is California brown turkey. Doesn't do well here in this climate. Complete waste of time fig. Borda Soap Blanca Ramada, this is panache, the same thing. Would not grow this here without a greenhouse. It doesn't ripen in, in time. It ripens pretty late, to be honest with you. There are some panache strains that I've been told are about mid-season here but because they split so often they're also very similar to Adriatic JH and Battaglia I forgot about about this one here I probably wouldn't keep it I'd keep Strawberry Verte over the the four of those Borges so Grease that's a keeper Brooklyn White my friend Tony loves this fig I don't know anyone else that likes it Brunswick we get rid of it the Cold Adams, we keep one of them and that's it Probably my cold it on Blanc here in, in terms of my own my own fig. So far the others don't really seem to produce all that well. My cold it on Blanc and Negra is ripening right now, and my cold it on Blanc are ripening right now. Galicia Negra. Um, I know my friend Raphael loves this fig, or at least he he likes it. I don't know if he loves it, but he he definitely regards it highly in terms of flavor. Personally. It has a similar texture to Black Mission, uh, which has which means it has a lot of seeds. It doesn't have that jammier texture. It's more juicy, more meaty. To me, that's not as pleasant. I'm on the fence about my Galicia Negra. It finally started to produce this year. I will get some ripe figs, actually quite a few. So we'll see what it does, how they taste. Um, but so far, I, I'm pretty much 99% sure I'm getting rid of it as of this point. Um, Italian honey. This is like uh, white Marseille, and you know there's a number of these different strains, and they could be slightly different than, from each other. But for the most part, Italian honey, white Marseille, Laterula, you know, depending on where you get them from, they could be quite different again. But uh, most of the time, they're pretty much the same honey fig that really isn't all that great. And I did have a white Marseille Breba that actually was is pretty decent, and I'm expecting it to improve over time. We put my white Marseille in the ground here, and uh, I'm excited for it. I am, but is is it by any means the perfect fig here? No. Is it like Hardy Chicago? No. You know, there I think there's better alternatives out there in terms of honey figs so far, like LSU Champagne and and Zafiro and uh, maybe yellow long neck or long yellow and there's another fig called Albo that I have that ripens super early um, so so far it's in the ground because I wanted to put something in the ground uh, and we had an extra tree Jolly Tiger I don't think produces all that well that's more for looks than actual eating long to do that's a big time keeper uh, LSU Dead Cat. I think there's a number of these. I think there's like a two and a four. I don't know how great they are. 
my buddy Brian has probably the big time scoop on it, but for certain, I don't think anyone has really proven if they can do well in the Northeast. So for me, that that's on the fence for this guy as well, right? Like he's trying to figure out which ones of these he can get rid of. So far, I'm getting rid of all of them pretty much. <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, there isn't really many that I've decided to keep out of all this list so far. You know, so far I'm only keeping Hardy Chicago, Strawberry Verte, Colden en Blanc, Borges Soak Grease, um, Long to Do. This is assuming I don't have a greenhouse, of course. Now we get down to the other LSU figs. Gold, uh, it's, this thing's on the fence, man. I think there's better honey figs out there. I'm just going to put it out there. I'm sure it tastes great. Some people say it can perform well in in rainier conditions, but there's better figs. LSU Huye is a good one to keep. Um, LSU Red, I've gotten actually some pretty good figs off of that tree this year for the first time ever, man. They're actually tasting pretty good, but it seems quite late. And uh, I don't know. Well, I'm on the fence with that one as well. LSU Purple, it's uh, another tree I think could be worth keeping. You got to let it ripen. Excuse me, a long time though. Martinique Ramada, uh, you know, and again, it's one of those figs you need a greenhouse for most likely. It, it definitely doesn't do too hot in the rain. Um, so it's in a similar category for me as like Italian 258 and, and Black Madeira. Mary Lane Seedless, I've had for uh, like three or four years and I decided to get rid of it. So uh, it didn't really seem to put out too many good figs a lot of them ended up aborting in the beginning portion of the season last year it didn't ripen all that well I think my tree personally if I had a fresh start with my Mary Lane seedless it would do a lot better um, but for me I think there's just better honey figs out there it's more of a mid-season honey fig as well there's plenty of honey figs now that ripen at the beginning of my season why have a, a late honey fig um, that to be honest with you, it does taste quite good. It's actually one of the better honey figs I've ever eaten. Olympian, this is an English brown turkey type. Um, so for that, I wouldn't keep it because they don't really do all that well here. They do uh, well in the ground because uh, they're quite hardy. But uh, they, you know, the tissue culture figs don't do well. I probably would get rid of all the tissue cultured figs and find. Uh, you know cuttings or trees from um, a well-established tree a well-established English brown turkey if I was going to keep that we also have panache okay so that's another one Bordeso, Blanca, Ramada and panache are the same thing Pellegrino and Long to Do are pretty much the same thing this Pellegrino comes from Mario in Connecticut it's a beautiful tree of his in fact it does really well for him and I saw it firsthand myself. It's beautiful, man. He got he's got it right up against his uh, his greenhouse, a spiade on a brick wall. It's gorgeous. Produces early. It's again, it's a very reliable fig, just like the long to do. Peter's honey, um, not a keeper for me. Again, it's a honey fig that ripens mid to late season, and it has really big issues with the rain. I don't know many people growing it anymore. Uh, I think because People would say that, uh, oh, it just has fallen out of favor. Well, I don't think it's, I think it's fallen out of favor for a good reason. <laughs> um, you know, it's very similar to Dotato, which is the original name for it in Italy. Uh, then we have Petit Negra, which is a Violet de Bordeaux type. Absolutely a keeper. I have about six or seven of those. Ponte Tresa. Uh, you know, this one still needs to be proven up here in the Northeast, but it is ripening quite heavily for certain people. Uh, it's producing well for certain people. It does take a bit to get going, though, unfortunately. So I'm not sure where I stand on that one just yet. I have to figure it out myself. Rosa Esmeralda. This is a fig that Carla Oz is selling, and um, I don't know too many people growing it other than her. So I can't really recommend it. I can't say I don't recommend it either. I don't really know much about it. I have talked to her, I think, very briefly about it. Maybe one or two things I've talked to her about. But for the most part, 
Um, it looks really tasty, by the way. I just didn't know if it was common, I think. But someone has ripened it outside of uh, California, so it is common. But I'm waiting to see, I think now, what it ends up being. You know, what is it like... What does it really look like outside of perfect conditions in California? Um, then we have Smith, and Smith is without a doubt a keeper. Uh, probably the best one on the list so far. Socorro Black actually could be another keeper, and I don't want to say it just yet until we get some more figs off my tree this year, but it seems about mid-season not even on the later side, maybe mid to late, somewhere in there, but it's not too late. It ripens a lot of figs, it produces well, and they're tasty. Um, then you got Strawberry Verte. That's the one I would keep out of the, the Adriatic types, the green skin, red interior figs. Then you've got Violet Sapor, which is said to be, could be very similar to Borgia Soak Reese, but it's not. And I think there's a big mix up in the community between people that have gotten this fig in the past and have mixed them up with Borgia Soak Reese and that's why people think they're the same or maybe they just look very similar and it takes a few years to really discern them but they are indeed very different and Borgia Soak Reese apparently is superior so um, we'll see about that um, I am I do have many copies of Borgia Soak Reese and <laughs> I am really strongly considering, I have a number of them in pots, a number of them in ground, but I think I may even put more in pots. Then you've got Violet de Bordeaux, again, very similar to Petite Negra, it's like the same thing. But it's a keeper, and I'd be hard pressed to get rid of any of my Violet de Bordeaux, any of my Long Dudes, like Pellegrino, any of my Hardy Chicago types, knowing what I know now. And then the last fig on that list is White Triana, and that is an incredible fig, uh, really productive mid-season. It doesn't even seem, I think it's earlier than I'm really thinking it is, to be honest with you, because it produces so well. The figs are also extremely rain-resistant and split-resistant, and I have a feeling it's going to completely replace my Col de Don Blanc. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually going to be propagating a number of those. So that's my goal this year. That's the tree that I'm propagating probably the most right now in terms of my air layers because we're going to put on air layers very soon on the YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that and how to do that. I'm going to talk about which trees I actually am air layering and why. Um, but so far, uh, that's one that I'm pretty sure is going to replace the Col de Don Blanc, um, at least I hope. Alright, so that was this little video here for you guys, this little episode of Fruit Talk. I hope you guys enjoy this, and if you know, you're know you still um, on the fence of whether or not you should join our figs, just do it. Rfigs.com, sign up, say hello. Check out Bill's Nursery here, Off the Beaten Path Nursery on Facebook. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to everybody next week, and we'll see you soon. I think we'll do a live stream next week, maybe. We haven't done one in a while, so. Alright guys, take care. And, uh, oh, uh, yeah, you know what? That's fine. We'll just check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well, guys. And check out the new website, by the way. We renamed it to figboss.com. I need, really need to update this and spend some time and sit down and change this whole thing up. We're getting new logos and all that. And, um, yeah. All right, guys. Take care again. See you next week.